start. So we got 30 minutes. And no problem. No problem. I was wondering, so altogether you sold about 30 million records. Yeah, about 35 million records. 35 million records. Uh, so how do you feel when you go back to the studio? Is that like pressure or that? I never knew that we'd sold that many records till about, oh God, two years ago. I was doing a TV show and you know that thing where your, um, um, William who does my press, they'd put the thing all together and they'd sort of looked into it and someone said to me, you know you've sold 35 million records? I was like, really? So is that how much, that's how many records, you know, you're just a bit shocked. So yeah, I didn't really, I didn't really know I know we'd sold a lot of records because I know when I go to my parents' house, there's a lot of discs on the walls. <laughs> and I know I live in a nice house. But apart from that, you know, it was kind of, I have a nice lifestyle. So, you know, I knew we had done pretty well, but, you know, you never know with numbers. You're a bit like, yeah, well, I've sold a lot of records. But then when somebody says 35 million, you think, this, this is a big number. So does it feel, did you feel any pressure going back to the studio? No. There was none at all because nobody cared. You know, the band, we cared. We cared that we were going to make another record, but we were just, we were just making a record because we wanted to make a record. It was like, yeah, let's just go and make a record. We weren't thinking, oh, you know, it's so important to make a Texas record and people are really going to want to hear us. Or, you know, there was none of that. It was just like, okay, we, we want to go on tour. We did some dates in the summer, right, you know what, it's time to make a new Texas record. That was, that was it. There was nothing, there was never, there was never any, this is when we're going to release it. The, there was never any big plan. It's funny because now everybody keeps going, it's 25 years, it's 25 years. And we're a bit like, wow, yeah. Maybe we're the dumbest band on the planet, I don't know. But, uh, you know, there's been, it's, there isn't, there hasn't been some master plan of, of dates and time uh, you know some bands are a lot more organized than that we're not you know people keep saying to us oh do you have footage of the making and we're a bit like no we just made it we just went and made the record so but in 2011 you started playing the conversation and so there yeah. started being like some kind of expectation yeah i mean i think we were we were kind of like we had we played um the conversation and we were playing detroit live on stage because we had the songs at that point and we were like right let's try them out let let's see where they sit up against the big texas songs and it was really interesting because you know we played them and you have that thing where you'll look at each other and go yes you know like these stand up these work so then you're thinking it's it's kind of like inspiring for yourself because you're thinking okay we've written some good songs we've got a really good beginning let's go and you know do more and make it even better so that was that was the idea behind it. Yeah. So you you did the demos with um, Butler from uh, from Sweat. We did well. We did some tracks with Bernard. Um, we did some tracks with Bernard um, because um, I just I just thought you might yeah, be because I could hear it going. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was the second time today. I know, and they keep changing <laughs> the in rooms and the music. No, I can keep going. So, um, yeah, Bernard Butler, um, this, uh, we've known Bernard for years, and I did some work with Bernard on my solo record when I did um, um, Melody record, and uh, when Ali, our guitar player, had the brain aneurysm, Bernard was one of the first people to call up and see how he was and, you know, just let, let us know that he was sending, you know, good vibes. And um, it kind of, we kept in touch. And we just, when we went back, when we started working, we were like, yeah, let's do some work together. And that was how it happened. So that was where it started. Then Johnny and I did some more writing and then we met Richard Hawley. And we said, oh yeah, we should write together. And we went off to Sheffield, me, Johnny, went to Sheffield and we wrote with Richard. So, Is yeah. Is that how you, you got back this blues sound? And um, I think that's just always in us. I think, you know, this uh, element of pop and, and, and soul and blues, sort of something, a bit of country as well, is always just 
kind of the music that we know so well and that we love. So it's kind of our interpretation of it. And Richard's kind of very much like, you know, loves all that stuff as well. And everything that, that, that we love is, is very much, you know, his thing. And he has the other sides of it that, you know, Johnny doesn't so much like, like but that I do, like Nancy Sinatra and, you know, Scott Walker and everything. So yeah, it's, it's, it's an inter it was an interesting combination between the three of us. Like two days in Sheffield, three Five hours all in, yeah. We didn't spend much time. We were, we went to the pub most of the time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Come in. Yeah. Oh, I think <laughs> we're, she's locked out. It's awesome. It's okay. <laughs> I don't mind. Doesn't bother don't me. Don't go back. It's all <laughs> So yeah, it was um it was just it felt a really it just kinda of felt like what we do. You know, we're musicians, so sitting down with other musicians and playing music and writing songs together felt totally right. You know, it didn't feel like any big effort, it didn't feel like Oh, we, we we didn't feel like we were chasing a sound or trying to do something that was that wasn't us. It was kind of yeah, we're just making records. And and why did you ask Kerrigan from Primal Scream to to enter? Little Barry. Yeah. Um, Little Barry, we know. Um, and Ali was on tour um, with his wife in in the band that they have Red Sky July. So Ali wasn't available to and we were right we needed some bits and pieces. So little Barry played on places like in some of the songs in the on the album. Was it because Ali because what I read was that after his uh, his accident he actually like couldn't really play the guitar. So is that like a backup or mm. he had to relearn No, he didn't at all. I don't know where you hit you're the first journalist that said that so I don't know where you read that. But no, he when when I, after Ali had the aneurysm, he, the amazing thing was is that all his old memory, like everything that had happened before, like all the Texas stuff, was really clear in his head. So all the Texas songs, he knew like, he didn't even have to think about it, so he plays them, like really easy. Learning new stuff is more difficult for him. It takes him some time, he needs to learn it, he needs to memorise it. It's a slower process because his short term memory isn't as good as it was, um, but he's amazing. No, he's he was the one that wanted to go on tour, and we went out. We went out on tour in two thousand and eleven, and and he, Ali played guitar live. You know, when you see us on stage live, that's you know, Ali's playing guitar. That's good. So yeah, and, and that's funny because uh, Sled and Primal Scream are actually like um, releasing new material as well. I know. So all the oldies, <laughs> all, all the oldies are putting out records. We're all putting them out independently as well. Um, yeah, it's interesting. It's an interesting time in music. It's a very interesting time in music because it's kind of like you've got like one side of the, the music that's like um, young bands who are basically breaking themselves, like through not being signed or whatever, and they're like building up a social media like their their own sort of audience. And then once they've got like a big audience, a big following, then, then the record companies are putting out the records. And then you've got the older bands who have already got the fans, but they're kind of going directly to that themselves through independence. It's quite an interesting time in music. It's like, it's funny because it's like worlds apart, but it's the exact same in a different way. And you have like all the maturity, you have all the modern vision of your music that you can I, you know, it's funny, I don't really have any vision of our music, I just have, I just, it's just what we do, you know, it's, it's weird, I don't have any, um, yeah, I don't really have any vision, it's just kind of what happens when we're all together. It's just natural. Yeah, I mean, obviously when you're writing a song and you're working a song and you're making a record, you kind of like, you're listening to it and you're going, right, we could take it this direction and do this and make it like that and it would be better if it was like this. There's all those things that happen. But as far as, you know, I, I don't sit down and go, oh, this is where Texas should be or this is how we should, you know, there's never really any of that. But, you know, we do, 
we do have things like we're making our own videos and everything and doing all that kind of stuff and we've shot the sleeves and we bring in teams of people that we trust and that we work with. So yeah, it is our own vision of, of what we are. So is that why you went for independent? No, I mean, we've always done that anyway. We've always been very, we've always, you know, worked with the photographers that we want to work with and always had, you know, the the lead in how we're, we're, we're seen. Um, but it just, it was just, it felt like a new time for us as a band. And as much as we've had a great career with Universal, which has been fantastic and, you know, I've had, we've had massive success with Universal and we've had a wonderful life due to that success. And we've worked with so many amazing people um, within the label. And funny, funnily enough, some of the people that were even at the label at Universal when we were there are actually at PS now. Um, so yeah, things change, people move about, and it just felt the right place for us to be. It felt like a fresh start, you know, it felt like we were relevant within PS, whereas um, um, within um, Universal, we were kind of there, but not really there, you know? Like they took you for granted. Yeah, kind of felt that way a bit. Mm. Yeah. So yeah, you see this, uh, this album is uh, kind of uh, in your face, maybe, maybe a little bit arrogant, really bold, really. I think as far as, I don't know, not song wise, but I kind of think like production wise, it's 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 got all the, the rough edges to it. It was very important for us to kind of keep the, the um, sound quite raw. We wanted it to be quite a raw record. You know, we didn't want to make it all smooth and polished. It had to be quite raw because um, it just that's what the songs were. That was how they were written, and it had to. It, we had to maintain that, like maintain that sound when we taken the songs from basically just off the the dictaphone and the iPhone to actually taking them in and playing them as a band and making them records. Um, yeah, and um, and I was wondering, you hadn't played with uh, this Johnny in like. Years or? Played with him? Yeah, I don't know. No, yeah, I have. Worked. Yeah, what? I haven't worked with him. Yeah. No, I work yeah. with Johnny every day. Johnny worked with me on my solo album and everything. Yeah, Johnny and I work always every day nearly. So that was not really close. Though, and we wrote all this album together as well. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, but he, we, Johnny wrote it with me on Melody, and um, he worked with me when we did the um, when I did the covers album as well. So yeah, I see Johnny every day of my life. I'm so bored looking at him. <laughs> so that was no real, because you said you wanted some fresh air putting out clothes. Yeah, but that's kind of like, I mean, that was very much like when, when I made the Melody record, it was kind of, it wasn't kind of, it was. Um, it was a record that was me having to clear my head. It was a record that I couldn't make with Texas. I couldn't get into the, the studio with the, with them and be in a situation where I was so vulnerable and in so much pain that they could see this. They wouldn't have felt comfortable with it and I wouldn't have felt comfortable with it and I never had the energy to deal with any of that stuff and I just had to go away and do this and, and get out of my system and that was basically what the Melody record was all about. Um, it was never about me having a solo career or doing anything like that. It was just me clearing, clearing the, clearing the the, the um, closet out, get it out and start again. And that was what it was all about. And then the opportunity came up to do the film record, which was just me having a bit of fun because I knew I'd never do that with Texas. So the opportunity came and I said yeah and did it. So yeah, so. It wasn't really a break or anything. Well, no. Yeah, it was so everything back. No, it was good. Yeah, well, yeah, no, I, I, I knew it was on good terms. But I didn't oh, yeah, no, but it, it literally, I mean, Tony, one of the guitar players, is my brother in law. Ali lives 10 minutes from my house. Johnny has a house behind my house. It's like we all see each other. Eddie, we see, you know, I don't see, I mean, I see Eddie a lot, but they're like, 
you know, you got to remember, we've been together since we were 17, 18 years old. So it's like, it's like, you know, it's family. It's kind of sometimes you don't see each other for a month. And then you call up and say, look, I need to do this, I need to do this, or would you do that with me and whatever. And it's not, the, it's, it's effortless, you know. There's not any big effort to keep in touch or big effort to be friends or anything. It's just, we are just family and that's the way it is. You know, we've known each, we've known each other all our adult lives. Yet you weren't uncomfortable to be to put out like something so personal with someone? No, because if you think about that in the terms of when when my um when I broke up with my father with my, my daughter's father, um it's difficult to be around people that care about you. That's that they're the most difficult. It's to it's easy to be around strangers. Because they don't know anything about you, they don't know the other people that are involved, they don't know um you properly, they don't know what you're about, they don't know if you're in pain, if you're happy, if you're sad. My band they knew I was really sad. They knew I was dealing with a lot of stuff that was difficult. And um, when people know you so well, it's hard to be around them. So that was why, because they are the closest to me, and that was why it was difficult. And um, so, yeah, then. That's all the thing that um, you learned French for not nothing. I didn't know. I didn't learn it for nothing. I, I mean, I feel really happy that I did. And saying that, I'm still not doing any interviews in French, but um, that's because I can hardly think in English. Um, but yeah, I really, it's funny because it taught me a lot of things. It taught me a lot about singing as well when I was learning to speak French because, you know, I was saying to you earlier, when I was le I was studying for like three, four hours a day, um, every day, and I had three tutors, and my face hurt so much because, you know, like this, we don't make this shape in, in English. You know, we never speak out like this. Everything's like, ho, 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 like this. We don't have this sound. It doesn't exist in English. And my God, my face, I used to be like this. Like after doing my lessons, I'd be going, oh, Jesus. Man. And it was funny because then I realized that it was quite good because when at first when we thought I was going to do the voice, it was quite interesting because it made me understand a lot about seeing the young French artists singing songs in English and English not being your first language. So you're doing an interpretation of what it is you hear. And it's funny because of the of of your language, you, you everything comes from this part. So you kind of sing more with your face than you do than with your stomach. Um, so it made me understand a lot of things physically that 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 you could help people to change if you were trying to explain something to them in terms of singing songs in English. So yeah, um, it was good. It was fine. I mean, it just didn't work out for the other party. And, um, but it wasn't a bad experience for me. It was a good experience. It was a good experience to, to learn French and to kind of touch the flame of maybe doing a French TV show, but then not doing it. So you're not angry at French? Oh, no, not at all. I don't, I, I think the TV show thought the French public weren't ready for me yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe not. Uh, and, um, yeah, there was also, because it's all a check on the industry, because like the, the problem with the voice was mostly because they, they, they didn't, maybe they didn't want you to be honest about uh, I think at the end of the day, the voice want to make a TV show and they want it to be an entertainment TV show. And I think they thought maybe I was very, uh, way too serious about what it is I do, which I am. You know, I am. I take music very, very seriously. And I think that um, they felt that it was too serious for the TV show. Yeah. Take like... I take it very personally. Mm -hmm. yeah. but, and, and you also say that, because um, I, I don't know, it's your view on the music industry, because in a way you've been there for 25 years, you've yeah. been there since you were 17, you mm -hmm. really... Well, I guess, and you worked with majors, you worked with an independent, so I guess... Well, I've only ever worked for major. 
that I've only just signed to PS, so this is my first experience. Yeah. Um, and we're, we're just about, to, we've not even released the record yet. So, you know, so far the experience is really good and it's been amazing. Um, there's an amazing team of people and that's basically what it is at any point, whether you're a major, an independent, whatever, it's having a great group of people who get what it is you're going to do. That's how it is at PS right now. Um, and for that, you know, I'm really grateful that they, they understand what it is we're trying to achieve. So, um, yeah, that's good. But, yeah, I've, I've, I've had most of my life, I've had all my musical life at a major. Yeah. But uh, you also say that the, the, the music industry was really sexist. Is that, do you feel oh, like I think I probably less? said that. Yeah, it's, it's like everything's sexist, though. You know, let's be honest. Let's be really serious. I mean, it's a man's world. There's no doubt about that. And yeah, it, it is. It's because, I mean, I don't care that it's sexist. I don't mind. I think it's quite amusing sometimes. It really amuses me. But it amuses me because I know what I want and I know what I can achieve and I know what I want to do and I know that I have a choice. But there's some young girls out there who don't know they have a choice and they need to know that they do have a choice and don't be fooled. It's completely sexist. And if you get a gut feeling that it's completely sexist, go with your gut feeling and follow it through and do what it is you want to do. Okay, so do you, does that still pressure all the time? About Not for me. You know, I'm a 45-year-old woman. How much pressure can a man put on me? Hardly any. It's like, you know, I have a big mouth. I can stand up for myself. And is that like a lesson you're trying to teach to your daughter? Or? Um... <laughs> I think I think what it is is like it's not a lesson that I'm trying to teach. It's just a lesson that it's just it's just something that I have learned and that um, you know my dad brought me up to. I mean I don't I don't think of people. I don't think there's men there's women and separate them. I just think is that person capable of the job? Yeah, I don't give a shit if you're a man or a woman. I don't care if there's a woman in front of me and she's she's crap at the job. I'm like. I weren't rid of her, I don't want to work with her, she's useless, I don't care. I'm not going to support her because she's a woman. I'm just like, you know. But if you are a woman, you normally need to be about three times better than the guy that's doing the same job. That's the difference. So, you know, you normally find that women that are, they're, they're like, you know, there's really great things that women that are like, they're very organised, they get the job done, if they say they're going to do it, they do it. They don't give lip service so much, whereas a lot of men give a lot of lip service in the music industry where it's like, yeah, you know, I'm going to make you a star, yeah, whatever. And do you think it's because you're, you got a big mouth and that you're strong and confident that, that you have such a, a big lesbian crowd? I don't, um, I don't know, I mean, I think... I, yeah, I think they think that I stand up for myself which, you know, most gay men and women have had to do. Um, they've had to go through a lot of question and um, judgment. They've been judged before anything and they've had to stand up for themselves. And I think they, maybe that's why we connect. And plus, you know, I've got this androgynous look anyway that I don't, I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm very much a woman, but... I kind of play with my sexuality, you know, I like, I dress more like a boy and, you know, it's not about, it's not about what you see for me, you know, it's like, I don't find sexy, you know, showing all your body and all that kind of stuff. I find sexy what you don't see, what you can't see, that's to me the piece that's sexy. And, you know, I love sexy. You know, sex is, <laughs> sex is really important, but it's what you find sexy and I find I find the secret sexier than showing me that. But you know, there's a place for everybody. Some people are really good at it. Um, is there anything you want to add? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I can't think of anything because, you know, everybody just asks me questions. So I'm like, I kind of feel like I've asked, answered so much stuff that there's nothing else I can say.